What's up everybody, Ryan Suchit here and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the new update that came out. I don't know if you're like me, but I got a bunch of emails from my clients asking about this. Um, so I thought I would just dig in, walk through it with uh, you guys and let you know my thoughts. So let's jump in. So here's the email we got and basically it says in October, the destination requirements policy will be updating, updated to include a new policy re requiring ad experience on destinations to conform to the Coalition for Better Ads standards, basically. Um, so it's about your destination, your website, your landing page. That's what this is in regards to. So let's dive in here. So this is the current Google policy. I have no idea if this has already been updated, if this is the old one. I, I don't read through this stuff all the time, but uh, I thought I would just quickly go through the highlights of here and then show you some of the stuff on the Better Ad standards. Um, so yeah. So the first one here, um, basically to do with pop-ups. Um, yes, they're annoying. I know for a fact I have clients who have pop-ups. So I don't know if this is gonna be one of those things where the pop-up has to, because it says here, interferes with the user's ability to see the content requested. So I don't know if it's one of those like pages that like the pop-up takes over the whole thing. You have to close it before you can do anything. So literally all the content is hidden. Um, or if it's just one of those things that has like the, the small pop-up, you could still see content on the side, but you still have to close it. Um, so I'm not entirely sure which one, but I know my some of my clients have pop-ups um, and they haven't been disapproved. So again, I don't know if this is gonna be the way they do it moving forward. Um, but the good news is with all of this is it looks like it's probably at least in the first you know few instances or whatever you're just going to get disapproved you can fix it appeal it get them back up doesn't look like you're gonna get suspended or anything so keep that in mind but yeah so pop-ups are just something to be aware of now when you're talking with clients and that type of thing usually what i do is like if i notice they have a pop-up um, you know moving forward and i see it i might just kind of say hey look you're at risk you know it might get disapproved we can keep it and try it but just so you know this is kind of against google's policies at this point um, the next thing is websites that don't load quickly. Um, you know, that's, everyone tries to have a fast loading site, but now I guess you could get disapproved for it or probably in the past as well. Again, this might be an older, this might be just the old policy with nothing updated yet, but something we should all be trying to do anyway. Um, direct download from the ad. I hope none of you guys are doing that anyway. Um, abusive experiences. A lot of this stuff isn't going to be super relevant, so I'm not going to talk about it. Original content. So um, a lot of this is, you know, things that uh, duplicate content or stuff you're not citing with sources, that type of thing, um, which I'm sure a lot of our clients do. Um, park domains, none of us are going to do that. Blank pages, none of us are going to do that on purpose anyway. Um, Destination, there was one I wanted to talk to you guys about. I just got to find out where it was. Um, well, let me just say it then. It's redirects, okay? So somewhere on this page, it talks about redirects. It might be here. But um, this one I noticed, uh, I, I was just thinking about because what basically happens with some of my clients is the homepage is fine. You know, I'm sending ads to the homepage. Nothing's redirecting. But sometimes like for our site links that have like the about us or those types of things. When someone gets a new site, they change the URL structure. But what normally happens is even though they change the URL structure, the old structure, so let's say it was like abc.com slash about us, right? And then the new site is abc.com slash um, go slash about us. Um, the, they would just set up the old one slash about us to now redirect to the new one. So the ads would still go to a live page. It would, it would go to the about us and it was fine, but they're basically saying that's not allowed, um, with those redirects as you're going to a page and then automatically you're getting redirected somewhere else without you doing anything. So that's not allowed anymore. So that's something, um, I'm going to be aware of as well. It was really that one in the pop-ups that kind of, I was reading this and, and thinking about that it's going to affect me because I do know a lot of our clients when they go to new sites, they change the URL structures. So that might be something that gets disapproved. Um, I don't know if it'll just be the site link that gets disapproved, but something to be monitoring anyway. Um, display, we're not gonna be doing much of that. I'll have the links to these policies too, so you can read through the full thing. Uh, destination not accessible. Yeah, not crawlable. I have seen that before where some people don't have their sites crawlable. 
Um, unverified phone number is another one. So this is something that happens anyway, especially for those of you that are using CallRail. I haven't talked about this yet. Um, I probably should in some type of video uh, doing like a full call rail setup. But um, for the unverified phone number, basically what happens is if you have a phone number on your site or no, your call extension, I believe, because if you're using a call rail number um, and that number is not on your site, right? Because um, you created a call tracking number in call rail and you put it in your call extension and that call that number is not on your website. So Google says, well, how do we verify this? So basically they disapprove it and it's pretty easy to get back up. All you have to do is, I usually link search console, which shows proof, or I believe you can add your uh, retargeting tag. So that's the two ways I usually do it. Um, again, you can, there's some other ways here, uh, but I'll let you read through that. Uh, but that's something to be aware of. <sighs> don't use fax numbers. I don't think any of us are gonna do that. I have seen this where some clients use like text um, for their phone number, so they obviously don't like that. Um, but yeah, so those are a few of the ones that I'm kind of aware of. I'm really not too worried about this to be honest, but at least now if your clients ask about it, you can kind of talk through it. And now I wanna go through the uh, better ad standards, um, which is like the new thing we have to um, listen to essentially. I have no idea if the old page um, has some of this stuff in there or if it's gonna change, but uh, yeah, let's just walk through it. The first thing I wanna mention is that, of course, this is the Coalition for Better Ads, but my assumption is this relates to any kind of pop-up or video. Like for example, you can have a pop-up that's not really an ad, you can have a pop-up letting people know about um, a new policy or something. Uh, my guess is it has to do with the web experience, not necessarily the ad, but it, it there is a chance this might just have to do with like sites that are actually using like Google AdSense and actual ads playing. Um, because this is to do with the ad blockers and that type of thing. Um, if you know, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to know. But yeah, I'm just going to go with the assumption this is a user experience thing and it doesn't really matter what you do. You shouldn't have pop-ups and that type of thing. But yeah, so uh, pop-ups here, um, they talk about uh, part of the screen or the entire screen. So it really looks like they don't want pop-ups anymore. Um, Auto-playing video ads with sound. Um, so yeah, if you have videos on the page, make sure somebody has to actually click uh, for them to start playing. Um, another one, uh, ads before the content of the page has loaded, forcing the user to wait a number of seconds before they can dismiss the ad. Yeah, very similar. Um, I don't have a lot of this stuff on my client's site. Large sticky ads I have seen, um, more so small sticky ads, like those little ones. I think I have one on my site actually. So I don't know, what I, I'm assuming this has yeah, 30% of the screen's real estate, that's pretty big. Um, so I'm not too worried about this one. Um, but yeah, you guys can read through some of these. Um, it looks very similar to what Google was already doing. Um, there's more here too, like with the mobile, you can kind of see. Um, it's very similar, but I know on mobile devices, some of these things on the desktop it might not be bad, but then the mobile, it's set to be like a full screen takeover. Like a lot of people have different uh, experiences entirely on their when people are searching through mobile. Um, you know, flashing animated ads, the ad density is going to be usually a lot bigger on a phone, um, that type of thing. Short form video, um, yeah, ads that can't be skipped, uh, mid roll ads, large display ads. Um, so some of these might have to do with like Google AdSense, but I'm just going to, like I said, go under the assumption that it's just about the destination itself because in this document, um, that's the impression I got, but yeah, please let me know if you know the difference. Um, but it's probably good for all of us to just be thinking about, you know, the person's experience. I know a lot of us are just Google ads people, but some of you might be businesses and you're, you know, talking to your web team. So these are just some of the things to think about. Anyways, guys, I'll make sure I put all of this, uh, all the links and stuff into the uh, description. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, um, please make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you can find your way back. See you in the next video.